to get to human level intelligence. So you're going to have, you know, within a few years, two years, I think, for some predictions, uh, a, a country of geniuses in a data center, to quote uh, someone who re will remain nameless. I think it's nonsense. All right, guys, so I'm a bit late on this, but Yan LeCun, Meta's chief AI scientist, basically just said he's done with LLMs. He's ready to move on. He thinks LLMs alone will never get us to human level intelligence. And anyone who says otherwise, according to him, they're delusional. So today, we're looking at why he thinks that, what he believes comes after LLMs, something he's already working on, by the way, and whether or not he might actually be right. So, yeah. A lot to unpack here. Let's get into the first clip. This was actually the opening question of the interview where he was asked, what has been the most exciting AI development in the past year? Uh, too many to count. But I tell you one thing, which may surprise a few of you. Um, I'm not so interested in LLMs anymore. <laughs> you know, the kind of, the last thing they are in the hands of, you know, industry product people kind of, you know, improving at the margin, uh, trying to get you know, more data, more compute, generating uh, synthetic data. Um, I think there are more interesting questions in uh, four, four things. How you get machines to understand the physical world? And Jensen talked about this mm -hmm. this morning in this keynote. How do you get, get them to have persistent memory, which not too many people talk about? And then the last two are, how do you get them to reason and plan? And there is some effort, of course, to get you know, LLMs to reason. But in my opinion, it's a very kind of simplistic way of uh, viewing, um, viewing reasoning. I think there are probably kind of more, you know, better way of, uh, of doing this. So, um, so I'm excited about things that a lot of people in this community, in the tech community, mm -hmm. might get excited about five years from now. Um, but right now, it doesn't look so exciting because it's some obscure academic paper. So he's no longer interested in large language models, and he's now focusing on four things. Getting AI to understand the physical world, giving it persistent memory, and teaching it to actually plan and reason. Now, you might be thinking, don't LLMs already do this? Like, we already have reasoning models and multimodal models. I mean, these models can definitely reason to an extent. They can also generate images and videos and understand images and videos, which means they have to at least have a general understanding of physics, right? And how the laws of physics affect how objects in the scene move and interact with each other. So as we're going to see in this next clip, the interviewer asks him, if not LLMs, then what? This is where Yan LeCun briefly talks about what he believes will be the next phase in AI. World models. Take a look. But if it's not an LLM that's reasoning about the physical world and um, having persistent memory and planning, what is it? What is the underlying model going to be? Um, so a lot of people are working on world models, right? So what is a world model? A world model is uh, we all have world models in our, in our mind. Uh, this is what allows us to um, kind of, you know, manipulate thoughts, essentially. So, you know, we have a model of the, of the current world. You, you know that if I, if I push on this on this bottle here from the top, it's probably going to flip, but if I push on it at the bottom, it's, it's going to slide. Um, and, you know, if I press on it too hard, it might pop. So we have models of the physical world that we acquire in the first few months of life, and that's what allows us to deal with the real world. And it's much more difficult to deal with the real world than to deal with language. And so the, the type of architectures that I think we need for systems that really can deal with the real world is completely different from the ones that we deal with at the moment. So what exactly are these world models? And what makes them so different to LLMs? Well, LeCun believes there's a fundamental difference between the way LLMs reason and the way humans reason. And that that difference comes from our ability to think in latent space. You know, when, when we reason, when we think, we do this in some sort of abstract mental, mm -hmm. mental uh, state that has nothing to do with language. Oh, like so you don't like animals. kicking the tokens out. You want to be reasoning in your um, latent space and it's not in token space. It's our latent abstract space, space yeah. right? Yeah. I mean, if I, if I tell you, you know, imagine a cube floating in front of you, and I rotate that cube by 90 degrees around a vertical axis. Okay. You can do this mentally. That has nothing to do with language. Um, uh, you know, a cat could do this. Uh, we can't specify the problem to a cat, obviously, through <laughs> language. But, you know, cats do things that are much more complex than this when they plan 
like uh, you know some trajectories to jump on a piece of furniture, right? They they do things that are much more complex than that, and um, that is not related to language. It's certainly not done in so you know token space, which would be kind of actions. Mm -hmm. It's done in sort of abstract mental space. So that's uh, that's kind of the challenge of the, of the mm -hmm. next few years, um, which is to figure out new architectures that allow this type of, of thing. That's what I've been yeah. working on for the last, uh, so, last So is there a new model we should be expecting that allows us to do reasoning in this abstract space? Uh, it's called, we call it JEPA, uh, mm -hmm. or JEPA world models. Mm -hmm. um, and we've, you know, um, mm -hmm. my, my colleagues and I have kind of put out a bunch of uh, mm -hmm. papers on this, kind of, you know, mm -hmm. first steps towards towards this over the last few years. So JEPA means joint embedding predictive architecture. This is those world models that learn abstract representations that are capable of sort of manipulating those representations uh, and, and, and perhaps reason and produce sequences of actions to you know, arrive at a particular goal. I, th I think that's the, that's the future. I wrote a long paper about this that explains uh, how, how this might work about, about three years ago. So this is honestly a great point. We don't always think in words. I mean, as he was saying, a cat doesn't understand language, at least not anywhere near the level we do. And yet, it can still plan and carry out highly complex movements. Like, your cat knows that if it jumps from the couch to the shelf, that it has to account for distance, momentum, potential obstacles, gravity, all these things that it doesn't even have words for. And yet, it can do this, because it has a mental model of the world. Humans do this too. We don't consciously think about the laws of physics every day, but we still catch a ball, pour coffee, navigate a crowded room. We reason in images, memories, instincts, sensations, even internal simulations, not just words. I mean, if you think about it, humans are the original omnimodal models. So yeah, Lacan's right in a sense. We do need something more than just LLMs to replicate the full complexity of the human mind. But at the same time, LLMs aren't useless. They've gotten us incredibly far, incredibly fast, and they're still evolving. The real question is, are they enough to get us to AGI? Or do we need something entirely different? In this next clip, Lacan makes it clear where he stands on that. Yeah, yeah, we, uh, I don't like the term AGI because, uh, you know, people use the term to designate systems that have human level intelligence. And the, the sad thing is that human intelligence is super specialized, so calling this general, I think, is a, is a misnomer. Um, so I prefer the phrase uh, AMI that we pronounce AMI. That means advanced machine intelligence. Okay, it's just vocabulary. Um, I think the, this concept that I'm, I'm describing of systems that you know, can learn uh, abstract mental models of the world and use them for reasoning and planning, I think we're probably going to have a good handle on getting this to work, at least at a small scale, within three years, three to five years. And then it's going to be a matter of you know, scaling them up, et cetera, um, until we get to human level AI. Now, here's the thing, historically in AI, um, there's generation after generation of AI researchers who have discovered a new paradigm and have claimed that's it, within 10 years we're going to have, or five years or whatever, uh, we're going to have human level intelligence, we're going to have machines that are smarter than humans in, in all domains. And that's been the case for 70 years. Um, and it's been those, you know, those waves every 10 years or so. Um, the current wave is also wrong. So the idea that you, know, you just need to scale, scale up LLMs or have them generate you know, thousands of sequences of tokens and select the good ones to get to human level intelligence. And you're gonna have, you know, within a few years, two years, I think, for some predictions, uh, a, a country of geniuses in a data center, to quote uh, someone who re will remain nameless. I think it's nonsense. It's complete nonsense. I mean, sure, there are going to be a lot of applications for which you know, systems in the near future are going to be, you know, PhD level, if you want. But in terms of, you know, overall uh, intelligence, no, we're still very far from it. I mean, you know, when I say very far, it might happen within a decade or so. So it's not that far. So he believes we may achieve AGI, or as he calls it, AMI, Advanced Machine Intelligence, within the next decade. And he thinks it won't come from LLMs, but from a new paradigm, world models, which he expects to emerge in the next three to five years. These are world models that can essentially think in latent space. They won't just process words, they'll need to actually see, hear, remember, and reason over time, just like animals and like humans. 
Now, this also means these models will have to be trained on everything. Text, images, video, audio, literally every modality possible to give them a well-rounded sense of the world. And while it might feel like we're already doing that, I mean, we keep hearing about how companies are running out of data, how the internet's already been scraped to the bone, but the truth is, the amount of data you were trained on, just living life as a human being, still far exceeds what any AI model can feasibly be exposed to. In this next clip, Lacan explains just how big that gap really is, and the unbelievable costs that will come with trying to shorten it. We think of language as kind of the epitome of human uh, capability, you know, intellectual capabilities. But in fact, language is simple because it's discrete. And it's discrete because it's a communication mechanism and it needs to be discrete, otherwise it wouldn't be noise resistant. You wouldn't be able to understand what I'm saying uh, right now. And so it's simple for that reason. Uh, but the real world is just much more complicated. Like, okay, here is uh, something that you, some of you may have heard me say in the past. Uh, current LLMs are trained typically with something like on the order of 30 trillion tokens, right? Token typically is about three bytes. So that's 0.9, 10 to the 13 bytes. Let's say 10 to the 14 bytes. Um, that would take any of us over 400,000 years to read through that because that's kind of the totality of all the text available on the internet, mm -hmm. right? Now, a, a psychologist uh, tell us that a four-year-old has been awake a total of 16,000 hours, and we have about two megabytes going to our visual cortex through our optic nerve um, every second, two megabytes per second, roughly. Multiply this by 16,000 hours times 3,600, it's about 10 to the 14 bytes. In four years, through vision, mm -hmm. you see as much data as text that would take you 400,000 years to read. I mean, that tells you we're never gonna get to AGI, whatever you mean by this, uh, by just training from text, it's just not happening. So yeah, whether or not Lacan ends up being right, he does make some valid points. Personally, I think LLMs are really only a piece of the puzzle. They might not directly get us to AGI, but they will at least get us closer to it and fast. And honestly, we haven't even scratched the surface of what LLMs are capable of. There's still a ton of untapped potential there. But maybe Lacan's right. Maybe the future isn't just language models, but models that can understand the world the way we do, and that we should probably start working on building them now. Let me know what you guys think in the comments though. Do you think it's over for LLMs? Are world models really next up? Or is this just cope from someone leading AI at a company that's falling behind in the AI race? There's a lot of ways to look at this, so I'm definitely curious to hear your take. If you made it this far, thank you so much for watching. Make sure to hit that subscribe button if you want to stay up to date on future AI news just like this. And as always, I'll catch you in the next one.